Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. Hello, my name is Ed Trebolsi. I'm a urologist at the Sydney Kimmel Medical College at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. And today we will show our technique for MRI fusion biopsy of the prostate using the Uranav platform. My patient is a 69-year-old gentleman with a history of low-risk prostate cancer on active surveillance. He had a prostate biopsy three and a half years ago, revealing one of 12 cores with Gleason 6 disease. He then had a subsequent MRI fusion biopsy six months later, which was negative. His PSA history is shown here. On prostate MRI, he has a PIRAD3 lesion in the right posterior lateral area of the peripheral zone. And this is the Dynacad image uh, showing the location of the lesion, which we will target. Our typical preparation is to use Cipro oral antibiotics before, during, and after the procedure, as well as intramuscular ceftriaxone and a rectal enema at home. We do also selectively use a rectal swab for patients at high risk for multidrug resistant organisms, including patients that have had previous sepsis, uh, healthcare workers, or extensive previous use of antibiotics. And then we also uh, use a local anesthetic block uh, using 20 cc's of 1% lidocaine injection. This is the typical uh, setup of the biopsy table. As you can see here, this is our patient positioning. The patient is in the lateral decubitus orientation. We have the MRI electromagnetic positioning box over the patient's buttocks and I've inserted the probe into the anus. There is a corresponding electrode that attaches to the probe that allows the system to know exactly where the probe is in real time in relation to the electromagnetic positioning box. Here is the Uranav system. On the left is the MRI images. On the right is the uh, ultrasound. And we can see uh, uh, the needle coming in for the uh, local block. We typically will give uh, several aliquots of the 1% lidocaine injection at the uh, junction of the base and seminal vesicles laterally on each side. And then additionally, uh, we'll use additional lidocaine uh, at the uh, lateral aspect of the prostatic apex on each side. Uh, and then if I have any uh, lidocaine left over, I sometimes will do additional uh, injection at the midline uh, medial prostate. With this a double anesthetic block, uh, which is twice our normal 10 cc uh, block for regular prostate biopsies, uh, the patient tolerability has been excellent with very minimal discomfort. Next, I will take my measurements of the prostate. So we take a length of the prostate and the sagittal view, and then we switch to transverse, and we take the width and the height and the anterior posterior height of the prostate. Typically, we do this in the mid gland where the prostate is the largest, uh, and this will give us a calculated prostate volume. I then will sequentially examine the prostate ape from the base and seminal vesicles to the mid gland to the apex and the transverse plane as shown here. And I'm looking for any obvious hypochoic nodules or abnormalities. At this point we do a handheld sweep through the prostate in the transverse position which the uh, software platform captures, and then my assistant draws the uh, boundaries of the prostate. Uh, we then uh, make sure that the automatically generated contour of the prostate appears appropriate. I typically will alter these borders in the sagittal plane shown here on the right first, and then uh, move to the uh, transverse plane. Um, just trying to make sure that the calculated um, images of the prostate appear to be uh, correct. We do have the elastic deformation uh, function that allows 
tighter registration of the ultrasound to the MRI. Here we're getting our first uh, targeted biopsy lined up. We typically do the biopsies in the transverse plane. Uh, my assistant can rotate the image. Um, basically the goal is to make sure that the purple outline of the prostate lines up with the ultrasound imaging that we're seeing in real time so we can move it or rotate it as needed. We then line up the needle guide with the center of the lesion uh, and I'm looking both in the top left to make sure that the needle guide lines up with the target and then if you notice in the pink on the bottom right we get an idea of uh, the rotational aspect of the probe and if we need to rotate it to get it lined up. I then take a biopsy and my assistant marks the position of the biopsy. Also of note, if you see in the top left box, the blue bar, that tells you spatially how close or how far you are away from the lesion. That helps you when you are lining up the needle gives you an idea of how close or how far away you are. I use that routinely to get everything lined up. I typically will do two targeted biopsies through the smaller lesions. Uh, if they're particularly large lesions, I may do four targeted biopsies with two targeting the periphery of the lesion and two more centrally. So those were the targeted biopsies, and then now I will uh, turn back into the sagittal uh, view where I typically do my um, systematic 12-core biopsy. Uh, we do a systematic 12-core biopsy in addition to the targeted biopsies for every patient. Some of the known complications of prostate biopsy include blood in the urine, in the stool, or in the semen. I warn patients that the hematospermia can persist the longest. We also worry about infection, and our infection risk with our double antibiotic coverage, fortunately, is very low. Um, in terms of some of the concerns or uh, pitfalls with this procedure, certainly the imaging is vital, and so it's very helpful to have a consistent radiologist reading the uh, MRIs. Um, the biopsy technique also uh, is very important to make sure the images are lined up uh, appropriately, and that's why attention to technique is very important. This patient, fortunately, on repeat biopsy, again, had no malignancy on any of the cores and will continue on active surveillance. He had minimal bleeding and no fever and did very well with minimal discomfort. Thank you so much for watching.